Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, as I offer these words tonight, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Our gospel narrative tells us in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ is born in a manger. This is the night, the celebration of that nativity. Bethlehem is, if you will, Christ's natal home. The place itself has meaning. Today, you can go there and see the place in the rock where pilgrims have made journeys over the centuries to see Christ's birthplace. It was an important place, and it is an important place. It was the city of David. It was far away from the center of life. It was small and rural and mostly poor. But the place had meaning. Angels, the shepherds, the wise men knew this meaning. Everything points, if you will, to who Christ is. This natal home, if you will, this Bethlehem, this manger reveals who Christ is, who God is. It reveals to us who we are. God comes to us in a manger. God comes as a child, innocent, and yet worshiped as a king. God comes in the manger for the poor, for the worker, and even the most powerful. He comes to a manger. The metaphors and symbols of this text of the reading are many and varied, and we could spend a long time unpacking them. This narrative is thick with theological, social, and political import. Not so long ago, people used to gather on Christmas, and they would read it together, and think about it, and talk about it, and argue about it, to try and figure out what it meant for them. The nativity, the natal place and story of Jesus has meaning. We all have natal homes, you and I. There is the natal place of our birth, of our own kind of nativity. This is certainly part of our story. You're thinking of it right now. Yet, as I ponder that, I also think natal homes are also homes where at times our lives are reborn and remade, where our story zigs or zags or wanders for a bit as we try and figure things out. We have a a, a natal home perhaps where we grew up. Truth is, though I am the Bishop of Texas, I was born in Carbondale, Illinois. Now a gasp. (gasps) (laughs) But I only lived there six months. My true natal home of growing up is Houston, Texas. Texas is where I'm from. It is a huge part of my natal story. And there are other natal homes, perhaps that place where, as you look back, you were the happiest. Maybe a home or a moment or a season in which you can imagine that natal place where you were made with so much joy. Maybe a natal home of, the, of your marriage. Maybe that first apartment that you had together. That was so cold in the winter, but it was perfect. NATO homes might also be a college dorm or the military. You see, these are these places of joy, but also sometimes of trauma and of sadness. Crisis, a car wreck, a bedside with a loved one. NATO homes are where we become who we are. They're road markers, if you will, in a very mobile society. After all, Jesus wasn't even from Bethlehem, but from Nazareth. So we might speak of the natal home of Christ in God, in the womb of Mary, fleeing to Egypt, Nazareth, desert. Maybe it's in the waters of baptism at the Jordan with John. That's part of what I hope you're going to understand after you leave tonight as you ponder the meaning of Christ's birth tonight. 
that our natal homes are tied with his are not merely places and events that have great effect upon us. They are also the places we choose to illustrate our affected story. The most important natal home for the Christian, though, is Jesus Christ. We are yoked to Christ in our baptism. Ultimately, above all the other homes that we have, our true natal home is the birth of Jesus in that manger in Bethlehem. And it is part of our story, too. Christ's birth changes our story. We are recreated, if you will, by it, by our choosing to be a part of it. We can attest, we can all attest to the fact that we wrestle with this and we have questions about it and that we fail because we're human. <laughs> in fact, we're quite good at failing. But that's okay because our natal home is in Christ. It's hard and it takes practice and work. But, you know, the truth is most things that are worth doing require hard work. We might even admit that sometimes Christ as our natal home doesn't fit with our desires and wants. So we redirect our gaze to other more powerful homes. Distractions. But for the Christian, no matter what winding road we're on, our nativity always lies in Christ. Christ is born and his nativity makes us a different people. To be a different people people in the world around us. As the last passage said, to be zealous for good works. St. Isaac was uh, an ascetic and uh, lived in Nineveh and wrote some things a long time ago, but I think it captures this, that Christ bestowed peace, so let us not threaten. Christ is the most gentle one. Let no one then be proud. Christ is the humble one. Christ brings us joy. Let us not revenge. Christ shows us goodwill. Let us not be mean. Christ is the Prince of Peace. Let us not be conquered by our anger. Christ is the Bountiful, impoverished himself for our sake. So invite people to our tables. Christ gives us a gift for which we did not ask. So let us give alms to all those who implore and beg us. Christ casts open the heavenly doors to our prayers. Let us open our door to those who ask for our forgiveness. On Christmas Day, Isaac wrote, on Christmas Day, the divine being took upon himself our humanity in order for humanity to be decorated by the seal of Christ's divinity. So tonight, as you sing the hymns and listen to the lessons, as you participate in this service, discover the nativity of Christ. But also discover your natal home as Christians. The one that truly defines your greatest virtues and aspirations. The one that remakes you and brings you ultimately to the defined. God's self. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.